called Master Builders. Master Builders. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Okay. It's important for us to know how God wants us to grow spiritually. Uh, there are a lot of different ways, a lot of different ministries uh, talking about growing, but, but God has his ways and we need to follow his ways. Otherwise, we're going to fail. <clears throat> and so we can uh, dream up all kinds of ways, but uh, what we're going to see here is that God has a standard and we need to follow his standard and that's the way we'll know that we are we are growing the way he wants us to grow. And we're talking about master builders because Paul said, I'm, I'm a master builder. And so, uh, but let, before we start with that verse, I want to say that people are building in all different kinds of ways. Mm -hmm. And the way that we're to build in the kingdom of God is to equip the people. We build the people, uh, okay, equip yeah. the people so that they can uh, work, do the work of the kingdom and work the service of the kingdom. And, and uh, so many people are building their own ministries mm -hmm. and uh, that's not the way God tells us to build. So we'll be looking at how he says to build. And, and I want to give you this uh, simple example that uh, I heard about a pastor one time and he, he was having a big uh, church building built on his property and and uh, he went out to the contractor and said, how can I help? I want to be involved. And he said, okay, I need so many uh, boards uh, cut and they're all to be cut exactly the same, same length. And I'll give you the dimensions on. So he, he measured that first one and he cut it. And then uh, he set the new one as it became his pattern. And then uh, the next one he cut, every one he cut became the pattern. And what happened, each one of them got a little shorter and a little shorter and a little shorter. And they were all <laughs> short because he didn't go back to the original uh, pattern. He, he, mm. he followed the new. And so that's the way a lot of people uh, build ministries. They, they build the ministry the way they've come out of a ministry. They've seen a particular ministry or they've seen a multiple ministries and they try to build ministries uh, like uh, they have seen. But the problem is it gets further and further away from the standard, from what God tells us how, <clears throat> how, to, how to build. Uh, and then particularly he's talking about building the kingdom. How do we build the kingdom? And so if you get further and further away from the standard, but you don't know because it looks good. And uh, each uh, person, each minister may add uh, thrills and frills to uh, the ministry. Uh, but he's still building uh, like the last ministry that he was in or she was in or the ones that they knew. And what we have to do is go back to the word of God. That's the only way we'll know how, how to, to build. And so I want you to see uh, from first uh, Corinthians uh, chapter three ten 10, uh, that Paul was a master builder. And so we need master builders. And I want Sherry to read this and then I'll tell you a story about a master builder. This is a, uh, from the Passion Translation, 1 Corinthians 3.10. God has given me unique gifts as a skilled master builder who lays a good foundation. Afterward, another craftsman comes and builds upon it. Builders, so builders, beware. Okay, so the master builder lays that foundation out there. Well, this is very vivid to Sherry and I because her dad, uh, is a master builder. He's uh, He built homes mm -hmm. and uh, commercial buildings in our city and around the city uh, for 40 years. He's uh, uh, 97 and soon to be 98. And uh, so we see how he did it. Uh, he started with the architect's plan and then he uh, graded, the, had the land graded the way it was supposed to. And then he put, built the building and built that foundation, a sure foundation. Amen, amen. And, and what I saw about the way he built things he stayed with it to the very end. He was the master carpenter also, and he built the cabinets. And so if it was a home, he built all of those cabinets. And so it, was, it just looked perfect. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. You go into those buildings that he built, they're still perfect. Yeah, they're, just, they're, they're still doing good. They're still doing, uh, they're just like he built them and like he, it was supposed to be built. And the, today there's a lot of other builders that are just building and, and uh, they do mass production. And, and so what happens rather than make sure everything's done perfectly, 
uh, they just finish uh, a home and then and then they let you move in and then uh, if you're dissatisfied with things, well, then they keep sending workers back and try to fix things. But that's not the way a master builder builds, I tell you. Yeah. Uh, we saw that with uh, the way Sherry's dad built. And, and so Paul's saying, hey, I'm a master builder. Well, what, what else do we know about him? Uh, an apostle. He, he was an apostle. So we're really going to be looking at uh, apostles and prophets and how, how they build. And uh, there are just a few points I'm going to make tonight because there's a lot of material to cover in this particular series on kingdom building. Uh, but the first uh, point I want to make is from Ephesians uh, chapter 4, and it'll go from 11. I want you to read first 11 and 12, and then I want to go to 13. Okay. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Okay, so he's given all these gifts and that the mission of the ministers is to equip the saints. Amen. It's not to build a ministry. Never, mm. never, never did he say build a ministry. But what we see is a lot of people are building a ministry. They're building ministries like they came from, like they know about, and they're trying to make them bigger and better. They're building ministries. Uh, one pastor told me uh, a few years ago that uh, his model for building his uh, church congregation was uh, quality customer service. So he, he looked at he, the people that came to him and uh, he saw them as customers. Well, that's not, that's not God's way of building. Well, let me tell you, he, he's not a pastor anymore. He doesn't even that's live in exactly that. That's exactly right. He doesn't live in that city anymore. He doesn't even live in that nation anymore. He, because you can't build your own way and, mm -hmm. and pull something in from the world and say, oh, this is the way we're going to build. We have to stay with the standard. And Amen. That's the Amen. Word of the God. Word of God. And we build it with apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Okay. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. We, the, that is not to build a ministry, but to equip the saints so that they can do the work of the kingdom. And now I want to read verse 13 until. So read mm -hmm. verse 13. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure, full stature of Jesus Christ. Have we gotten there yet? No. No. We have, we're not all in the unity of the faith. We're not in the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. And so we still need apostles, prophets, prophets evangelists, evangelists, pastors, pastors and, and teachers. teachers. Amen. But I was in a group of uh, ministers a few weeks ago, and uh, one of them stood up and said, uh, uh, I've been told that uh, we don't have past, uh, apostles, apostles anymore, anymore. Uh, because Paul was the last apostle. Well, that's a lie. That's absolutely a lie. And I'm going to show it to you out of the scriptures. And this says we're going to need apostles and prophets mm. until we're all oh, coming indeed. together in the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. And so the first thing I want you to see here, number one, is that ministers equip the saints. Mm, mm so that they can do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. And we're not, it's not about a pastor doing everything and inspiring the members uh, of his congregation to come back on Sunday night and then on Wednesday and then come back the next Sunday. That's not what it's about. Mm. It's about equipping the saints. And if you're uh, interested in ministry, you need to realize the mission and the assignment of ministry is to equip the saints. It's not to build I mean, a ministry. I mean, I mean. Now I want. Uh, well, I just want. I just okay. want to say something here. <clears throat> when we were in Honduras, we met a dear uh, young man who has much uh, anointing and power on his life, and and he said to us, "I just don't want to be uh, a, a senior pastor." And I, and I began to laugh and I said, I am so very glad about that because senior pastors are on their way out. Uh, that's the old structure. A senior pastor, as an associate pastor, those, it's, that structure is on the way out. And so I said to him, I am so very glad uh, that you don't want to be one. 
And I said, but the Lord has much for you to do. And uh, so I just yeah, wanted to called him to be an Amen. apostle. Amen. See, an apostle is going to see things differently. See, Hallelujah. Apostle sees from a big picture. And, and there are three sub points under this first one about equipping the saints. And first, and this is about apostles and prophets we're talking about, emphasizing that part of it. But we're, of course, covering all the ministers. And uh, first of all, I want you to know that Jesus is still sending apostles and prophets. Let's read Luke 11, verses 49 and 50. The wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill, and some of them they will persecute so that the blood of all the prophets shed since the foundation of the world may be charged against this generation. This generation. Now, you read that verse. Every, every generation can read that verse, and it says, I will send apostles and prophets. So it's not about it, that it's ended. There, there's mm -hmm. not the end of apostles and prophets. We need apostles and prophets. And we see right there that wisdom says we're going to just keep sending them. And if you reject them, then the blood of the prophets, of all the prophets, mm -hmm. is going to be on our head. Mm -hmm. This generation. So we're all being, we're wow. all being judged. Uh, he is sending apostles and prophets. And we, we need to know how are we receiving those apostles and prophets. Okay, read this next verse here. Uh, mm -hmm. This is 52, 11, uh, Luke 11, uh, 52, uh, which is really interesting. It says, Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourself did not enter in, and you've hindered others from entering in. Okay, so mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. leaders then, what he's saying, this is Jesus, he's saying the leaders are limiting what the people are exposed to. Mm, and so if mm. they reject, if the leaders are rejecting apostles and prophets, then they're keeping withholding the key of knowledge. Mm, oh, you can, mm, you don't mm, let mm. Uh, the uh, people be exposed to apostles and prophets, then you're limiting the key of knowledge. They don't get to see and understand the key of knowledge because it's going to be coming then with the apostles and prophets. Mm, and mean, here's something mean, else in John 13, uh, verse 20. If we reject apostles and prophets, we reject Jesus. Oh, oh wow. Listen wow, to this. Wow. It depends on who he's sending. And we know from Luke 11, he's sending apostles and prophets. Mm, mm. Now let's look. John 13, 20. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the one who receives anyone I send receives me. Woo! And the one who receives me receives him who sent me. Okay. Woo, hallelujah. So he goes all sending? the way to the top. Who is all Jesus the way. sending? He's sending from Luke 11, verses 49 and 50. He's sending apostles and prophets. And if we're rejecting who he is sending, we're rejecting him. Jesus. Amen. And the Father. And the Father. And I didn't even bring that up, but we're rejecting mm, both of mm, them. Oh, mm. uh, we don't want to do that. Right. We don't want to do that. See, this is been in my heart uh, many years ago when I read Ephesians 4 uh, verses 11, 12, and 13, I knew somehow I needed to be connected with apostles and prophets. And, and so I searched. I searched for years. I really mm -hmm. didn't know what they looked like. I didn't know, but, but I could read uh, I could look at people and see their ministry and I knew they weren't apostles and prophets. Uh, they were pastors. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, so it took me a long time, I, I, but I searched. I knew I had in my heart. This is something that God put inside of me before I was born. I needed to be connected to apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so uh, we searched for them and, and we finally found it. It took a, a long time, but the Holy Spirit led us because we had such a hunger in our heart uh, for apostles and prophets. We found them, and, and uh, we found a community of apostles and prophets. And amen, our spiritual amen. father was Bob Terrell, and he lived in Texas. And so we went out there and saw him and saw all the ministries related to him. And uh, they came here and visited us and, uh, and just poured into our lives and changed our lives completely and released the ministry that God had for us. And we continue to relate to apostles and prophets. And we, we uh, minister all over the world, and uh, we were recently in Mexico and then in Honduras and 
uh, soon we'll be in uh, Peru and uh, and so we're and then Mexico again, different places. So we're men, but that's all connected with apostles and prophets because that's still in our heart. We need to be connected with apostles and prophets. But you just don't hear that in a local congregation. They just don't let you know that this is an important kind of relationship for you to develop. And so we talk about equipping the saints. And so these next, I have four more points that I want to cover, but these all talk about equipping. How do you equip? equip? Well, uh, the number two point I want to make is that, that apostles and prophets lay foundation mm -hmm. in the lives of people. And that's really important. You need to be around uh, apostles and prophets and they, they will lay a sure foundation and you can stand on the foundation. See, you see, you'll fall if you don't have a sure foundation uh, in your life. So read this here in uh, Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2.20. Having been built on the foundation of <clears throat> apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. Okay, so who's laying the, who's laying the foundation? Well, you've got to have that connection with apostles and prophets so they lay a sure foundation in your life. Otherwise, you can't build beyond that point. Uh, anything you lay on it, and see, it's the same thing that uh, we started there with the 1 Corinthians 3.10. Paul said, I'm a master builder. I lay a foundation, and whoever builds on my foundation, it's going to be tested by fire. Oh, Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, are, you laying, wow, wow. are you building on somebody's foundation? You better make Woo! sure it's a good foundation, and you're laying the right, right right things on it. Amen. amen. The foundation. Well, let's, let's talk just a moment about foundation. When we talk about foundation principles and and um, well, concepts. Well, it, it's things okay. like love and forgiveness and, and faith. faith. And uh, it's about the things that we're talking about right here, right tonight. These are foundational uh, understandings that we and principles that we need to understand. These are foundations and we can go way on out there, but if the foundation is not sure, everything's going to crush mm -hmm. and everything's going to crumble and everything's going to fall, uh, fall apart. So we need those sure foundations. Now, here's another thing uh, that it says the apostles and prophets do, and, and that is they know about the mysteries and they reveal the mysteries to us. Read this uh, uh, verse here in uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, 4 and 5. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to mankind as it is now being revealed to his holy apostles and prophets. Who are the mysteries revealed in the spirit? To? Who are the mysteries revealed to? Are they revealed to the teachers and the evangelists and pastors? No. They're revealed, revealed to, to the, the apostles, apostles and, and prophets. prophets. You need to be connected with apostles and prophets so that you'll really know the mysteries and you understand the mysteries. See, that's another thing that Jesus said in Mark chapter four. And again, he was talking to his apostles and he said the mysteries of the kingdom. Listen to this. And he was saying to them, to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. But for those who are outside, everything comes in parables. Okay, mm, so mm, who's, mm, who's mm. getting the mysteries of the kingdom of God? It's the apostles and, and prophets. And, prophets. And, and so we need to be connected to people who really see the mysteries, what the mysteries are, and reveal those mysteries to us. And that's part of what I'm doing tonight is revealing some mysteries to you that you probably haven't heard uh, from other uh, from other sources, but you need to know these things. Now, uh, the next point I want to make is about we need covering. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever level of ministry you have, you need covering. A and apostles and prophets are the people who offer covering uh, mm -hmm. to people who can provide such covering. And I want you to think about Paul uh, for a moment. You know, he was out there and he had spent some time in the backside of the desert and then he was preaching Christ, preaching the kingdom of God. You look, you see he was preaching the kingdom of God. And then there was a little bit of controversy. So he submitted himself to the apostles of the Lamb. He went up to Jerusalem and explained to the apostles of the Lamb 
Uh, so what he, he was, what he was teaching. So he submitted himself to them, and, and they said, "Well, we we uh, we're in agreement. We're in agreement. We just say do a few other little things, but that didn't mean that." When Paul said in the Galatians too, he said they didn't add anything to me. <laughs> I've been preaching Amen. this, but he Amen. submitted himself to the council. And see, the um, Jesus encountered a centurion, and and that centurion brought forth in in Ma Matthew eight, beginning in verse five, but particularly in uh, from Matthew eight on, uh, he mm -hmm. he showed. Uh, about how authority works, that you have to be under authority mm -hmm. to have authority. You have to be under covering to have authority and, and to be able to operate. And so the Lord said to us that you have to be under to be over. So if you want to have authority, mm -hmm. you, you've got to be under somebody. And that's the way uh, the kingdom of God operates, that, that we need covering. Uh, and so uh, we need people that will be over us and, and watch for our souls. That's what, uh, Amen. That's Amen. what uh, Paul wrote about. Her. The, they mm -hmm. watch for our soul. That's you right. know, that's the right. people that we give covering to, it, it's it's amazing. We know what's going on in their life before they do mm -hmm. uh, because it's by the Spirit. See, if you don't have people who are, are watching for your soul, uh, th then you need to connect with somebody who can do that. Uh, we need people in our life who can provide covering for us because otherwise if people are out on their own, the devil will have a heyday with them. He, he will just run all That's over right, them. Right. If they're out, uh, out from any covering or out from out on their own, because he's looking for somebody alone. That's you know, right. Your That's adversary, right. Yeah, the devil, devil is looking for someone to devour. That's right. And don't be out there on your own. Uh, trying to do things. Be sure you're connected to the body of Christ the way that God has you, mm -hmm. uh, that he intends you to be uh, connected uh, to the body of Christ. Amen. So Amen. covering is Amen. really important. Okay, what's this next point, Jerry? The, the final point. Oh, the, the final one, okay. Final point. We're bringing this to a closure. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Apostles have the seed within them to birth other ministries. Okay. You know. So that's very important right there. Pastors don't birth sheep. Oh, mm, that's something mm, our pastor said a long time ago. Mm, 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 sheep mm, birth mm, sheep. Mm. Pastors don't birth sheep. And so there's a lot of people out there with pastors and they're, they're just wanting to gather people together, gathering people together. But what I want you to know is that apostles have seed, seed. within themselves to bring forth other ministries, other ministries. And, to not, and to cover those ministries. And, and we think about Galatians 4.19. Mm -hmm. I want you to read this here. Yeah, I love this scripture. It's Galatians 4.19. My little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Okay, so here, Hallelujah. Paul is birthing Christ in people. Oh, you know, let me let me say this: When we pray, when we pray for each one of you, this is what we're praying. We're praying that Christ will be formed in you. We're praying that you're going to be an overcomer. Uh, we're praying for you to prosper. Uh, we're praying for you to be protected from the evil one. These are the things that we're praying over each one of you. Oh, hallelujah! And 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 we go down through the all the Zoom groups, you know, the English group, this is the English group, then we have the Spanish group, we have the the Honduran group, we have the Chinese group, and we pray that all of those that are involved in those those meetings have a kingdom mindset with kingdom strategies uh, so that they can deal wisely uh, with the affairs of this life. And the enemy will not overtake them. And the enemy will not prosper against them. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. And, and we do this on a daily basis. We do this on a daily basis. Hallelujah. And there's a final point I want to make. And this is uh, from the book of First Thessalonians. If you look at First Thessalonians 1, uh, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, you'll see that three men wrote it. It was Paul, mm -hmm. Silas, mm -hmm. and, and Timothy. Timothy. Okay, so 
but in chapter 2 verse 6 they said that they were apostles mm, mm, and who is that mm, mm. paul silas, silas and timothy and timothy so paul i got this man silas who was a prophet when he came to paul he was a prophet, prophet. and uh, so they traveled together and uh eventually he became an apostle mm -hmm. and so paul had that seed within him to take a man who was a prophet and develop him equip him for the ministry Ooh, hallelujah hallelujah. That god had for him. hallelujah to what god had for him mm. and so he became an apostle right there in first thessalonians and then mm -hmm. then timothy when timothy came to him he may have only been a teenager he was just a young man a disciple and and then uh paul began to disciple him and, and then develop him and equip him for the work of the ministry. And, and then here in 1 Thessalonians, if you put 1 Thessalonians 1.1 1, 1 and 2.6 together, you see that Timothy became an apostle. Oh, hallelujah. But he even told Timothy to do the work of an evangelist. So so he, he there were lots of different steps and uh, things that he went through, but he wound up as a an apostle. And uh, just like I think about that man standing up the other day and telling me there are no, there were no other Paul, apostles beyond Paul. Paul was the last one. Well, Timothy is an apostle, and he surely came after mm -hmm. Paul because he was a disciple of Paul. And, yeah, and hallelujah! And, and Paul was beheaded before Timothy. Uh, his life was over with and Timothy was an apostle and Silas was an apostle and, and so you look at all the apostles uh, there were yeah 12 apostles of the Lamb but apostles of Christ there's an unlimited amount because the wisdom of God says we're sending apostles and we're sending, sending prophets, prophets. To, what are you going to do are you going to receive them or are you going to reject them do you want the the keys of knowledge do you want the mystery of god do you want to have foundation built in your life where well, you need to uh, accept whom jesus christ is sending unto you amen, this is just a, a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about in this series uh, because this is about how we grow this is about mm -hmm. how we grow mm -hmm. spiritually we cannot yeah, yeah grow by man's ways Ooh, we hallelujah. have to follow god's ways if we're going to grow and if you've been called into the ministry which all of you have uh, we have some some type of ministry all of us have some type of ministry if you've been called in the ministry let me tell you you need to follow god's principles Amen. that he's laid Amen. down in the word of god i want to thank you for being here today i'm going to turn it over to sherry Hallelujah. We want growth. We want to grow ourselves and we want each one of you uh, to grow. And I believe that we grow as we participate and are connected with each other uh, that we can pray for one another. It says confess uh, your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you might be healed. And so we, we grow uh, by being connected uh, to to each other. And it's so important to be connected to those that can release things into our lives and be a part of what God is doing in our lives. And apostles and prophets are those uh, ministry gifts that that have that, that authority uh, from the Father uh, to release uh, what is within the, the potential that's within each individual uh, that they're connected to they can release that potential and and uh, that's part of equipping uh, and I know that um, you know uh, sister Rebecca uh, she is an equipper uh, she's part of the five-fold ministry and 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 when she has meetings you know that's and when she takes people out on the street that's what she's doing she's equipping she's she's releasing in them she's teaching and releasing uh what the lord tells her to to teach and release so that those individuals can do the work of the ministry and it's not about 
whoa, I have a big ministry. Uh, you know, I have a worldwide ministry. It's, it's not about that. It's about showing forth Jesus Christ. And so that people can uh, come to him and come into the kingdom. And uh, the time is short. You know, as I've been uh, uh, lately, I've just been uh, sensing in my spirit an urgency, an urgency to to reach out to people, our families, our friends, those that that need Jesus. Uh, I just have that urgency in my spirit, man, uh, that we are to uh, to be hearing what the Spirit would say unto us. And so I'm going to open up the... Before you do, let me just say that God told us a long time ago several things. He said, uh, don't build a local congregation. Mm -hmm. Don't build a local church. That was not what we were called to. We're really extra local. We're outside. So we touch local congregations. We touch people uh, where they are. Uh, but but we're we're not about bringing people. That's another thing he said. Don't bring people to where you are. You go where people are. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, uh, you know, one time some people came to us and said, oh, God told us to give you uh, this school bus so that you could go around and gather up people. And I, and I said, that's, that's not what God's telling me. He's telling me to go where the people are. And that's the reason we're doing these Zoom meetings. We're doing the Zoom meeting uh, to people into your home. We come into your home. Glory to God. Uh, we, we just want to connect with you, connect with the people that love us, that we love, that we're con- that God's connecting hearts together, uh, uh, uniting us in, in spirit. Uh, and those are the people that we want to equip, we want to pour into, impart into them. Uh, because our role, what God's called us, is not to build a building and build uh, and then demand the, and require the people to come into our building. That's not what we're about. And you see it right here in Ephesians 4. Mm-hmm. We're not, that's not what the ministry is about. The ministry is about equipping the saints so they can go out and do what God has called them to do Amen. and fulfill their purpose and destiny. Amen. Okay, Amen. Well, we 